I was always thinking what I do and how do I describe my job. And the short version is I sell sales navigator. The long version is I help salespeople to keep their jobs. Because when you think about the world of sales, when you think about how everything changed, one thing tries to remain is the relationship. It's how we build it, it's how we drive it. And we live in a different world. When I started with door-to-door -door sales and then I advanced within a corporate sales, dinners, drinks, that's how we close the business. Now, think from your perspective. When was last time when you, as a buyer, agreed to go for a drinks with a salesperson? Because we all buy something. We buy insurance, we buy this, we buy that. When was the last time when you've done it? You've got more things on your head, you've got less time to do it. It used to be golf or tennis in our part of the world. So I'm Polish. We didn't discover golf that early. Uh, it's starting to be popular now, so we had a tennis. Now, it's very difficult to move. And still, we live in a world when, if you want to understand what's the US foreign policy, Twitter <laughs> is your choice. Restaurants had to extend the time they service meals because people take pictures of their food. You haven't had that before. And we've got more friends on Facebook than in real life. So even though you may not believe that social is the right way, everyone else does. And in reality, you as a salesperson, doesn't matter what you believe in. Really, it doesn't matter. Because 77% of buyers don't believe that salespeople understand their business and they cannot value. Think about it. Every time when you start a sales conversation, what you believe in doesn't matter because your buyer already thinks you've got nothing to say. But somehow, we still believe that the cold call is one of the most effective ways to engage. All school sales manager would say, hit the phone towards the end of the quarter. We come up with this marketing automation, which is great software, but we pushed it down to another spam, regardless of the channel, social, no social, email, it's another spam if it doesn't add value. And of course, content, which is gated. You go in, you think that's gonna be something exciting, you fill up this form, and it's how my company is great and amazing. And you're like disappointed again. And then you start giving all those weird data because form can take everything. And then they start call you. So recently I was downloading the report and I had, of course, the gated content. So I wrote that, yeah, my name is and I'm CEO of LinkedIn. I had a call within 10 minutes from senior sales guy who just picked up the phone and said, hey, you're CEO of LinkedIn. I'm like, no, it's a public information. Just do your job. So think how you engage. And when you think about all the channels, when you think about what's happening, you have to realize that something got end in the beginning. Our spam marketing had a birthday recently. I think it's around 40 years old. Do you know any other tool which has been used that long and still have got a vision of success? So people start to understand that they have to move. Early majority moved to social selling. There was a cast where nothing happened, and then we moving on. And depending on the region which you work. In the US, we're kind of where it's early majority. Within CE, Nordics, it's still kind of early stage. So you can win it. But one thing showed that now everybody wants to be social. The social selling. I've seen at least six topics on the conference related to social selling. It's really hot. When you look on LinkedIn, the social selling consultant is born more often than a baby in some countries. Because everybody wants to be social, but why? Because selling to people who want to buy is so much better than interrupting those who don't. 
how do you actually do that? And you've got many platforms. I will talk about LinkedIn because I work for LinkedIn, so I don't have enough knowledge on Facebook. Plus, if you look at my picture on Facebook, I wouldn't have serious business conversation with anyone. So we've got over 500 billion members. You all know LinkedIn, yeah? Is there anyone who doesn't have LinkedIn profile? And don't be shy because I can't see you. <laughs> so we grow, we get the updates, people engage in the conversation. And over time, we've seen that if we build professional context, we have to give people ability to leverage that. Because what's the most precious commodity for salespeople? And I buy a beer to the one who's going to answer that. Okay, anyone else? Huh? Okay, anyone else? I'm not buying beers. It's time. We don't have time. Time is the most precious commodity for salespeople. Everything else is important, is part of the buying process. You build the trust, trust wouldn't be a commodity for you. So we created something that could fit in between your system of communication, which is your email, between CRM, which is your system of record. We put LinkedIn and we put Safe Navigator into that. It's designated tool, it's designated platform for you to be able to extract information from LinkedIn, be efficient, and don't lose time. So, how actually we can help? And it's four easy steps. And you can replicate some on free LinkedIn, it's just gonna take you away more time. But first one is find, you need to find people who want to buy from you. Not who you want to sell to, who you want to buy from you. Then you have to relate to them. If you're able to relate, if you're able to build the relation, you're so much closer. You're so much closer to building the trust because it's coming from their source. It's understanding. It's making sure that you understand not only their company, but them as well. We all have our personal goals. We all have something that drives us in the morning. And then we engage with them. So, I'll give you an example. That's one of the statistics around you know, high net worth individuals uh, on LinkedIn. We have a lot. We can know more than anyone else because people give us information about uh, what they do for a living. And I was working with one of the banks. Uh, not this one. This one actually is only reference uh, what they got with it. And they had a question, how do they find high net worth individuals? So they were operating in Nordics. And we've done this exercise recently, and we picked Spotify. What happened to Spotify around two months ago? The IPO, exactly. Which means that if you've been within Spotify for some time, the IPO was significant equity event for you because all those shares were released. So we looked at two filters. We looked at how long did you spend in the company, and we narrow it down to people who've been three years and above because that's where the options were vested and seniority level manager and above, because that's the amount of shares would be of significance. And suddenly we come up with a short list of people who had the equity event now and are primary target for what you do. And you can do that with any type of company. If you sell software, you're looking for people who actually engage with your software because they love it. HubSpot, for example, one of the easiest ways to engage because people love their software so much is to find who was working in a company which used their software. Because they loved it, so it's so much easier to sell. But then, how do you relate to people? You found them, and what next? So, we can actually show not only your connection, but we can bring you connections of your team. We can ensure that if you want to talk to someone, you're not going cold. You ask for a person to introduce you. Because I'll give you a very simple example. IT companies are selling their services to IT decision makers. Very often, that's the primary point of contact. But salespeople don't know developers in their companies. And guess what? Developers know the developers and all the C-suite within a company they're trying to sell to. 
So we're trying to do that. And we actually have seen that people will more likely engage with you and will more likely get interest if you have a common connection. And here's the surprise, the same university. If you went to the same university within the same time, you can start with that, and that will open the conversation away more than anything else. So find this information, find that thing which gives you a personal entry, so you're not coming as anyone else. And LinkedIn is a platform of data, so we can create you know, strategy content, audience, we can help you to guide. And one of the things which we looked at is, what's the easiest way? What's the easiest way to actually engage and lift win rate for the reps? And engaging with lead content came on the top. When someone is posting something, you have to engage with it. Because we all like likes. All marketing departments have been built on that. And we look at it from perspective as well of the data and the engagement. And we've seen for one of our clients that when we pick their four accounts, for key accounts, the competitors started growing their connection density within that company. And we ask question, hey, you know that client, one of your competitors is growing the connections. Is there anything happening there? And the guy said, I don't know, let me ask. He came back after a week and said, actually, yes. The competitors are going after them, which means we can provide you with the intelligence. And that intelligence can help you to act. But once you understand what's happening, if you play defense, if you play offense, you know, you relate to person, you engage with people. If you want this presentation, it's linked in slash Buddha. If you go on that link, you will see that presentation. But what I will see in return is that you engage with it. So even though I don't have a list of you, whoever is interested in a topic will actually look at it. So we're making sure that you engage through this. We make sure that you engage through email. But email cannot be another form of spam. Spam through social media is still spam. As simple as it is. You have to add value. You have to produce something what your person is interested. That's why you relate to them. That's why when you're growing the connections, you're growing the connections with people you know or can offer some value. That's not a race. LinkedIn will not give you a prize for having 20,000 connections or something. There is no signed letter from Jeff Winner coming up. So think about your network. When you think about social selling, Think about people in your network and people who you actually deal with. Because they can add value or they can take the value away. And be active. It doesn't cost anything. Have the view of your prospects, of your client. Because from one side, you can understand what's their personal interest. You can understand what they value, what's on top of their mind. And that may not be their business, but that might be something what you can connect with. If you see that person within automotive industry is talking about bitcoins and you know something about it, comment on it, add value, share. It doesn't have to be exactly what you sell. That will bring you the level of trust. And when we looked if that works, we actually looked into the connection between CRM systems and the uh, search navigator activity. We looked into where we actually moved the needle. And we've seen that there is significant uplift across all the metrics. So when you do social selling, when you actually try to engage, regardless of platform, regardless of maturity of organization, you're not doing that for fun. It's not marketing department from early 2000 when you could defend something based on the number of likes. It's the activity which is precise in its steps, which delivers you significant value in terms of pipeline, in terms of revenue, in terms of your connection density and time to close.
And with that, thank you very much. And yeah, looking forward to speaking to you.